everybody for coming today. We're going to be talking about the 2011 Marketing Communications Awards program. And so thank you all for joining us and welcome. Our presenters today are Melissa Lutz, FSMPS, CPSM, Director of Marketing and Principal at Champlin Architecture in Cincinnati, Ohio. Melissa was our MCA Chair last year. And we also have Christine King, CPSM, Director of Marketing at JE Dunn Construction in Denver, Colorado. And Christine is going to be our MCA Chair next year. And from the national staff, we have Molly Dalerta, Director of Online Services. She's also the MCA staff liaison, has been doing this for a number of years. And I am Christine Chiricella, Marketing Manager, also an MCA staff liaison. Just a quick minute here on some of the control panels that you see. If you wanted to open or close your panel, you would hit the orange button that you see circled on your screen. Uh, if you wanted to test or do anything with your audio, you'd use this area here. If you have a question, you can raise your hand. You can ask a question at any time verbally since I've unmuted the lines, or you can just type in your question into this box if you'd like to do that instead. And we are recording today's uh, webinar, so everybody will receive a link at the end of this um, that you can go online and, and you know, view this and listen to the recording at the end of the session. And you can forward it to anybody else who might be interested in the awards program. Just a quick overview of the program. Most of you probably already know this. It is the longest running awards program of its kind, now in its 34th year. It recognizes excellence in marketing communications for professional services firms. We do have 23 categories this year. We added three new ones this year. And our deadlines are coming right around the corner. March 7th is our early bird deadline. And that has to be postmarked by March 7th in order to get our discounted price. The final deadline is March 21st. That means that the pieces have to arrive here no later than March 21st to be considered for um, entry. And all the details can be found online on the website at smps.org slash mca. Now Molly is going to help us um, tell us how to prepare our entry form and our binders. So Molly, go ahead. Take sure. it away. Hello, everyone. Um, a copy of the entry form is available online um, at the URL that you will see throughout this presentation. It's very simple, smps.org forward slash mca. Um, once you download the form, it's your standard entry form. Uh, just one note, a lot of, I do get questions often if they're judged actually on the presentation of the entry form and the answer, of course, is no. Um, so you are certainly uh, welcome to handwrite um, the information in here, or you can type it, or you can fill it out in PDF mode, whichever you prefer. Um, of course, we appreciate uh, clarity, so it'll help the processing of the entry form a little bit uh, smoother. Um, but a couple things to note some questions that we normally get. The name of, um, of the firm that we're asking for here is who uh, you would recognize, like to be recognized if you were to win. So if it's a graphics firm um, submitting on behalf of a company, this is where you would want to enter the graphics firm name. And perhaps in quotations or in parentheses, you could put the firm that you're representing. Um, you could also um, put this information under entered by. This is where we're normally looking for an individual contact name, the person who we can call if something's missing and we have a question about the entry and who would like to be notified if you win. For the member number, if the person submitting themselves is not the actual member of SMPS, if you could just put the member number there along with the person's name that you um, have requested. Normally what in this case, there might be uh, a marketing manager who's a member of SMPS and they'd like to submit um, using that person's member number, that is fine. We just ask that you um, make sure you get permission from the member before you put their number on there. And the same information for address, city, state, zip, uh, we're looking um, for that contact information so that when this is what we will use to notify um, the recipients if they've won um, and they're also what their status is if they did not win. Um, the, then you have a list of your entry categories. and on the next um, portion of the entry form, that is where you're going to list the number of um, the category on the left-hand side, a description of the entry. And the description of the entry, what we're looking for here, if by chance you happen to be submitting two entries in the same category, this is where you would disseminate between the two. Um, so let's say you're entering um, two magazines. You would put the name of the one magazine on one line and the, ma and the name of the magazine on the other. If you're entering like a website and a magazine, 
report, you can just put um, the category names. It's not really necessary for you to write a long, detailed description. We're just looking to identify the two entries if they're happening, if you're happening to enter into the same category. Um, the entry fee uh, is say again, you would just put the amount. Um, depending upon if you're entering one or two or multiple entries, you would put that amount there. And also, depending on the time in which you are submitting your entries, if you're going to qualify for the early bird discount, which um, Christine explained earlier, or if you will be paying the full price um, for the later registration date, which is, or excuse me, submission date, which is the 21st. Um, we're asking you to just total your entries, um, the total fee, which should match. Uh, this will be the number that would be applied to your check um, and also to your credit card if you provide credit card information. A note about credit card information, um, that, that area of the entry form will be removed after it's been processed and will not be viewable to any of the jurors or anyone that is processing your entry after the information has been collected. Um, and that's in two separate areas, so sometimes people are concerned about that for security reasons, which is completely understandable. Uh, but that information is removed, and we actually um, put that in a very special envelope that actually goes to a shredder. So we take that very seriously, and we just want to make sure people understand that that's not information that's just laying around. Um, and then, of course, at the very bottom is the address for which you are to submit your entry to. Um, and please note, it is a new address. Um, we have moved literally in the last month. So please note, we do have a new address. Um, and that's where all the entries should be submitted to. Then the next step, basically, once you've completed the entry form, it does go on the front of the view binder. And that's your standard, um, basically, vinyl binder that has the clear protective sleeve in the front that will allow you to insert. Um, some people go ahead and do a, a very pretty cover, which is totally fine. We, we, again, you're not, you're not going to be judged on the cover of your entry, um, but of course, you know, presentation is everything. So, you know, we would encourage you to make it, you know, uh, conducive to a, the, your actual entry. But the information is very important for that to be on the front of your entry. And then on the inside of your binder is where you're going to um, have a copy of your check, um, the actual check, and then a copy of the check, and then a copy of your entry form. And that is all mostly for processing um, purposes. We just ask that we have a copy. Um, it saves us a great deal of time when we're processing the entry so that we don't have to make uh, copies of everything if you have already made a copy yourself. Um, another note, if you are making a photocopy of a check, we recommend you do it in the black and white versus color. <laughs> uh, the color copies and, uh, have really come a long way in the last couple of years. And we actually have uh, a hard time sometimes um, discerning between the the actual copy and the real check. So you can just make those um, in black and white. And if you can't do that, you can just put void on the front of the copy. It's just um, for proof of, of payment. And then uh, for the inside of the, of the actual binder, we're looking for a, cap a table of contents. And uh, we ask that they're put in the protective sleeves um, because these binders are used um, throughout the day. Multiple people are looking at them, and it helps save the content um, so pages don't get lost or misplaced. Um, the number one, one of the number one reasons we do this in this exact process, using a binder and using the protective sleeves, is we're trying to keep your entry intact. Uh, we don't want anything removed from your entry. We don't want um, anything to get misplaced. And in order to do that, we have to use this process. Um, and it's been very helpful and very successful over the last few years. Um, we get a lot of questions about um, what if my entry doesn't fit in the binder. We have posters, we have t-shirts, we have mugs. Um, it's not a problem. We just ask that you use binder clips, tape, rubber bands, whatever you can possibly use um, to basically um, keep the binder in place with the actual pieces so that it doesn't get separated in the judging process. And that's pretty much um, all I have for, for preparing the binders. Hi, everybody. I have the next part. It's the clarification statement. This is Melissa Lutz. Uh, basically, for the clarification statement, take a look at the instructions here. And what I would recommend is that you follow this and treat it like an RFP. You want to make sure that you answer every question you're asked here, because when the judges look at this, they're going to look for these. They're going to have a copy of these clarification statement um, requirements, and they're going to make sure that you answer everything. So I would break down Break down each one of these questions, uh, write the question out, and answer each one of these. Um, the goals, what were your goals? Review those with the team who put the piece together or the campaign together, and um, maybe what you wanted to achieve, and then how, how do you intend to measure those goals? 
then look at your target audience and define that. How many pieces did you send out? What was your audience like? Who exactly were you targeting? Uh, was it internal, external? Um, content of the piece or program. Any research or planning that went into this prior to the planning, um, I would kind of, if you worked with a team of people, maybe get everybody together and get all the ideas and brainstorm um, and pull all those together. And then how did you produce and deliver the, pro the project? Did you use an outside firm or did you do it in-house? Um, for the key messages, what did you want your key messages that were intended of, for the piece or program to be? And then what were your thought process in making them stand out? Um, the next part of this is the results of the marketing communication efforts. This is worth 10 points of the support, and we really oh, stress this. We, we have to have you tell us, how did you measure this? What were the measurable results that you want to include? Um, you go back to the goals section where you wrote, how, did you, how would you think that you would measure this in all your goals, and then how did you achieve your goals? How many did you mail? Did you reach your audience? What was your response that you wanted to get? What was the response rate? Um, you know, you can include quotes from clients on their piece that they received, or let's say, for instance, if it was a holiday piece, um, any comments that you got, got from people regarding that, that piece, include those in the binder. Uh, judges will look through those results and, and uh, measure your entry accordingly. Um, the other thing is, what was your break-even goal for profit or loss? Did you achieve it? Did you meet your sales goals? How many new clients did you get as a result of this? Um, did anybody do anything differently? Maybe if it was a recruitment or retention, um, did you get new employees and that sort of thing? Did you get new clients as a result of this? Um, did you get projects that you hope to get if you're doing specific project marketing efforts or anything like that? Um, and what was your return on your investment? Um, the next part of this is your budget and cost data. And for your budget and cost uh, for materials, printing, delivery, you have a choice whether to include labor or not, and you check the box if you are including labor in that cost, um, and try to get that as accurate as possible. Um, Christine King, do you have anything to add on, on the results, or did you want to talk about exhibits and samples? Well, um, I just just a couple of comments on the results. After having judged for quite a few years, um, one of the things I've, I've realized as a judge and the committees that have I've been on panels with, we the results in the budget, we really do look at that. I, I've had quite a few entries that, you know, have not actually filled in a budget or we didn't know what our budget was or whatever and or, you know, we didn't really have a budget. You have to really submit something so that the judges can can validate that and quantify what you were doing and including the results too. The quantification is a very important. That's really all I had to say. <laughs> okay. Um, the next section for entry samples, Christine, did you want to address this? Um, sure. Sure. Um, as far as the entry samples, one of the, the key things, um, especially on anything uh, collateral, um, corporate brochures, any of that, the more actual items that you can send with your binder, and, and Molly did mention that it's really hard to attach mugs or t-shirts or any of that stuff, but the more samples you can can include, the, the better view of the, the whole piece that you have. Um, if it's a um, holiday card, you know, Including the re including the results in your clarification statement, and then including um, you know comments that you get as as an attachment, even in your your piece, that helps the judges a lot. Just re being able to review the samples, and and we're all we all like tactile things, and being able to touch and open it and feel the paper that it's made with, and and all of those things really does impact the judging. Okay, great. Anybody have any questions so far on samples or preparing your binder? OK. Um, the next slide is going to be a sample of the display board that the finalists will prepare. So the judging day is going to happen um, this year on April the 9th. And all the jurors will get together and make decisions on you know first, second, and third place. And the notification letters will be sent out at the end of April and early May. People will be told that they're a finalist, but not what place that they have, you know, what they have won. Um, that will be announced during the conference at the gala. Um, but in the notification letter that's sent out, 
office will be given instructions as to how to prepare a display board. And those boards will be on display at the conference. And then we also use them throughout the year to send to different um, regional chapter meetings to you know, help to educate the members about you know, marketing trends that are going on now, what firms are doing, how they're marketing. So we do send them out um, in addition to, to having them on display at conference. We do use them quite a bit as examples of marketing excellence. So this is what a typical board might look like. Um, it would have um, the category and the firm name and then samples of the winning entry and also um, bits from the clarification statement as well as some contact information. So this is something that the finalists would prepare and they would be you know, notified that they're a finalist and how to prepare this. So it's something that you don't have to worry about right now, but just we like to show this because um, later on, if you do become a finalist, you might have some questions. What does a board look like? So just a little sample for you here. Um, this is just our website. It's www.mca, uh, sorry, smps.org slash mca. Um, you'll find all the details there. We have an uh, entry form up there. We have a postcard. We have all the category descriptions, submittal requirements, all the fees, the criteria for judging. So any, any question that you might have, would be online, but then you can also feel free to call the national office, and we're happy to answer your last-minute questions. You can also email awards at smps.org. And now I just wanted to open it up. If anybody has questions about you know, your particular entry, you might be considering submitting something. You've got a specific question about what category to put it in or you know, how to you know, complete your binder, anything. Um, we're happy to help you. I just wanted to open it up. I don't know if this is helpful to other people, but last week, this is Melissa Lutz. I had a question I called Molly about, and it was the I don't know category. We had an entry that we have, mm -hmm. and we can't figure out exactly where it should go. Can you explain a little bit about the I don't know category to those people who haven't already answer, asked the question of you? That is a good question. That, that's a new category this year. We've never done this before. It's something that we have seen in other awards um, programs, and we thought that might be kind of a, a good idea. Because sometimes people just don't really know how to categorize their entry, or maybe it spans a couple of different categories, and they're not sure exactly where to put it. So if, if that's the situation with your entry, you can pick this new category called I don't know. And then what will happen is SMPS will review the entry and then we will make the decision as to what we think the best category would be. Because sometimes it, it, it might span a couple different things. So if you want to you know, kind of leave that decision to SMPS, based, you know, we'll make the decision based on our past history, you know, where something like this has typically done well in the past, that's where we would put that entry. If that makes sense. And, um, and we're going to give a shot. So I don't, this is kind of a final yeah. decision. So right. So whatever we decide, it's going to be the final decision, exactly. Yeah. No questions? <laughs> <laughs> and just for everybody's information, the other two new categories um, were trade show marketing. So if you, you know, have gone to a trade show this year and um, just had a really you know, great marketing piece that you created for this, um, that's a new category. And then also video and podcast is a new category. Um, it used to be part of social, um, yeah, social media, but we broke it out this year into its own category, just really trying to focus specifically on entries that are video or podcast. So those were the two other new ones in addition to the I don't know category. OK. So we don't have questions. Molly, is there anything that you can think of that we uh, didn't no, the cover? Only thing, um, cover? That, that, yeah, that comes up every year is people, um, and sometimes it's too late. It's when we've actually received the entry and it's in front of the juror and they, they see the date in which the project was completed. Um, can you go over, again, the time frame and why we put an actual year-to-year um, uh, -year, um, mm -hmm. project creation That's point a good on idea. that? Yeah, that, that, is a, that is a good question. Um, the cutoff date for the marketing pieces actually is December of 2010, and it spans from the previous January. Um, and the reason for cutting it off this past December and not extending it until now is that 
this is not just a design competition. It's really um, a competition that looks at everything um, in your submission. It looks at the design, looks at the you know what the piece looks like, but it also looks at the results. The results is a big part of it, and so we have this little lag in time frame because if you haven't finished your marketing piece by December, chances are you're not going to have any results to show for it. So the cutoff is intentional so that you can have results in these you know the three months gap and um, you know just have something to show for for your piece, some results to show. So that's really why that's done. So if you've got something that you're just now finishing up, a marketing piece, it's, it's you know beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's, it's wonderful, it's written well, um, but you're just now finishing it up, it's best really to hold that until next year so that you can complete that results um, part of the clarification statement and make sure that you do have strong positive results to show for your marketing piece. Okay. Is there anything else, Molly, that we're missing? No, I think we've we've covered think everything. And if anybody thinks of anything, um, you can see the information there on the screen. Feel free to give us uh, a call or email, whichever you prefer, and we'll be happy to assist you. I'm sorry. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Wow. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. I really appreciate it, and good luck with your entries. Um, and. You know, good luck to you, and again, yeah. feel free to call us. And thank you to all the yeah. panelists for helping oh, out today. Thank you. An external thing until people get used to okay. it. And okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Right, thank thanks, you. everybody. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Have a great Bye. weekend. Okay, you too.